Welcome to another exciting edition of Showreel. I'm Tony Pankaluik and we have a jam-packed show for you today. We will be chatting about the latest news in the business and we'll be taking an in-depth look at some new releases. Also, David and Margaret will be doing an exclusive review for us at Showreel. Sitting alongside me is my co-host, Lauren Peacock. Thanks, Tony. But before we get into all of that, we're joined by our special guest today, the multi-talented Mac Linden. Mac is an actor, director, producer, writer, and occasional model. And he's here to talk to us about himself and his latest projects. Thank you so much for coming in, Mac. No worries, guys, thank Thanks. you. Now, first of all, tell us, how did you get into acting? Yeah, so it started, I uh, left school and got into law, and then I deferred that for a year because that kind of wasn't really my passion. And I worked down at Dreamworld, did the Bush Ranger show down there, stunt comedy shows, that was, yeah, a heap of fun. Yeah, and sort of went from there, really. Mm -hmm. So in your early career, were there any sort of role models or inspirations for you that you know, led you into yeah, it? Yeah, look, I, um, Heath Ledger was, yeah, he was close to my heart. Um, just, you know, mm -hmm. the other story, he jumped in his car in Perth and came out to Sydney to make it. And, um, you know, that sort of faith, I guess, that sort of, you know, let's just throw all the, all the chips in and go for it. That really inspired me to do the same for my, for my career as well. Yeah, now, mm. you're not only an actor, you're actually done producing and directing as well. At mm. what point did you decide, you know, you wanted to branch out into those? Um, I think as an actor, you're always doing other people's work. And if you're a creative person um, like me as well, then you want to sort of concentrate on your own projects and things like that. So you sort of, you know, you hang up the, uh, the acting coat and, uh, and then get into the other areas. So, yeah, directing, I love directing if it's my own project. And, um, and producing, well... I'm good at it, but I don't really enjoy the business side of things too much. Yeah. So you're currently working at World um, Film Vision Films Australia. Yeah. What um, can you tell us a bit about it and how long have you been there? How'd you start there? Yeah, sure. Um, Vision Films Australia is my wife and my own production company. So we're working on a feature film at the moment, uh, Rainbow Bay, which is a fairly big project. It's sort of been in the making about three years, and that's set to start going into production in November this year, but we also do um, sort of TV commercials with a, bit of a, with a bit of a difference on the side that just uh, keeps the coffers turning, so yeah. Now Mac, you're actually uh, working on The Boat Show here at Digital 31, tell us a bit about that. I was, thoroughly enjoyed it, um, no it was good with um, Bobby Hans on the team, yeah we had a lot of fun, um, you know, out on location and on the, on the rough seas at times and yeah, I, I really liked presenting that, so presenting work, it's fun because it's, it's um, sort of live and you've got to respond and ad lib and all the rest um, with the conditions or you know whatever if there's fish getting thrown in your face or whatever <laughs> but yeah now we had a heap of fun um, yeah for the time that I was, on, I was doing that. So now currently your most recent work is um, Rise of the Underdog and you've been involved mm. in writing in it and directing in it could you tell us our viewers what it's about? Yeah sure so um, Rise of the Underdog is based on a true story um, about a guy who had a one night stand after um, you know there was allegations made against him that were false and um, you know he went to jail and then sort of his battle um, to sort of fight for justice and you know and a couple of lawyers who sort of saw his case and saw that perhaps the first trial went a bit wrong um, so you know this, the story is pretty powerful we, we, we've, we wrote the story we did a pitch trailer which is called um, Rise of the Underdog, that's the working title. That's since been renamed to Rainbow Bay. Um, we don't want to give away too much of the, you know, what the story's about, so we had to sort of change um, the title to Rainbow Bay. So yeah, we've got a lot of interest. Um, the script's just come back from Sydney, um, from the script editor of Animal Kingdom. Um, we got a good, um, really good constructive criticism there, so we've sort of had to tweak a few things and get it a bit more ready for um, the Australian market and, and overseas as well. On that mm. subject, have you come across any challenges along the way so oh, far? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, can you tell us a bit about some <laughs> yeah, of those? Yeah, for sure. Look, um, budget's always a challenge in this industry. You know, um, we we basically had $30,000 to make the trailer um, and we sort of, um, you know, we went over, you know, and we were cutting corners as well. So mm -hmm. it just, you really have to have a very um, disciplined line producer mm -hmm. on projects like this. So that was our biggest, um, our biggest challenge, keeping under budget. Um, you know, I'm still paying off a few, a few bills there on that one. But, um, but yeah, look, you know, weather wasn't really an issue. You know, a lot of productions have weather issues for challenging. Um, but we were okay if it rained, it, it worked. If it was sunny, it worked. All the scenes were quite flexible on that, um, 
That's lucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very lucky. Yeah, yeah. Like with, especially with the content material, there's a lot of ethical considerations you obviously had to go through. What was mm. that like? You know, yeah. really deep content. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, th we've come at it from a completely different angle. I mean, um, you know, anybody being raped is, is a tragedy mm. and we certainly um, don't condone that. Um, we were sort of looking at uh, the whole issue on the flip side that in the flurry of cases, um, drink spiking uh, allegations. There were some guys who went went inside, um, you know, who hadn't actually, in fact, dr um, spiked the drink. You know, so yeah, it's a very controversial area. But you know, we've got the stats behind us that you know it's less than five percent of actual um, drink spiking, you know, allegations are real ones. So we sort of were dealing with the the larger majority of allegations. You know, for some of the guys that have actually ended up in prison um, for that. So yeah, you're right. It is a very um, a tricky area so we've kept the the bulk of the story as a buddy movie about this um, you know this straight this straighty um, from you know uh, normal society uh, all of a sudden thrown in with hardened criminals and how he met um, Damon and armed robber in, in, inside and how they both sort of impacted each other you know it's um it's already been labeled as an Australian version of Shawshank Redemption so <laughs> that's kind of pretty cool so yeah, yeah. What a great, yeah, yeah. To have yeah. compared yeah. to when can we mm. actually um, expect to see it released? Like, when can me and Lauren go and just... Yeah, yeah. just go down to the cinemas. Yeah. Um, give me a call first, I'll come <laughs> with this. Um, yeah, look, probably late next year, we're hoping on sort of um, November 2014 at this stage. So that's obviously, you know, the goal path might, might be moved a little bit there, but that's what we're hoping to... Now, so, this, yeah. this is a huge project for you. Mm. Do you reckon it's going to be one of your greatest accomplishments or is there something else that's... Yeah, no, I think it will be. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be a, a big one. Um, you know, we're not even looking about trying to make money on this. We just want the story to be heard. We, you know, it's already had a powerful impact on a lot of people's lives that we've um, talked to. And um, yeah, it will be, I think, the biggest, best thing that we've done to date. And then we've got more films to come. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that certainly was fascinating. Don't go away. We'll be more. Ba we'll be back with more after the break. Nicholas Winding Refn's film Only God Forgives premiered at this year's Cannes Film Festival. The director of Drive has again teamed up with Ryan Gosling for this Thai boxing crime thriller. Early critic reactions have been quite divided. A main criticism has been that the film is extremely violent with accounts of audience members booing loudly or walking out in disgust. Keanu Reeves was also at the Cannes Films Festival promoting his new movie, a contemporary martial arts film entitled Man of Tai Chi. This trilingual film aimed at both Chinese and Western audiences marks Reeves' directorial debut. Microsoft has announced that they will be teaming up with Steven Spielberg and 343 Industries to create a new live action television series based on the Halo video games. It is not clear whether the new show will be offered on regular television networks or be exclusive to the new Xbox One console. American TV network CBS has just announced that it has commissioned the single camera comedy Bad Teacher as part of their 2013-14 season. Based on the 2011 film of the same name, the film will star The Sopranos' Airy Grainer in the title role. And finally, in the world of acting news, Hollywood legend Sir Christopher Lee has released his second heavy metal album, Charlemagne, on his 91st birthday on Monday. It is a far cry of The Lord of the Rings, but proof that age is no barrier to recording a record. So let's talk about the latest news in the business, guys. Now, Keanu Reeves is down at the uh, Cannes Film Festival uh, promoting his film. What do you reckon, guys? He's, he's directing. Is he going to be good at this or what do we reckon? Well, first of all, let's just hope he's a better director than he is actor because as we know, <laughs> <laughs> Keanu cannot act to yeah. save himself out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> but, I know I'm a bit nasty, but yeah, uh, hopefully, you know, good luck to him. Mm. You know, it's called Man of Tai Chi. It's a martial arts film. Obviously, he's got experience in that. That mm. would be, you know, I think he could, you know, he could do very well. What are your thoughts on Keanu? Yeah, I, th I think, um, 
I don't know if I'd hit him that hard with the, <laughs> with the const- but he definitely yes. plays the same sort of thing. It's like, yeah. oh, I've got to go here now and do this. <laughs> yeah. So it's that same sort yeah. of, yeah, that yeah. wet paper acting in each mm-hmm. film. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he, he's like as a director, mm-hmm. you know, as compared with, you know, Mel Gibson or, you know, got Ben Affleck who did yep. Argo and so. Clint yeah. Eastwood, yeah. Clint Eastwood, That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. they're good, good versions. Maybe yeah. there is a positive. Maybe Keanu will... Yeah, maybe he'll bring find his calling after all. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, this is something you're sort of used to because, I mean, you mentioned earlier acting and directing and you um, you notice, like, there's um, different bits to it. Like, the directing, you know, you would like to have more control with mm. acting. You know, you, it's more just you're playing with the character. Mm. Do you think in Hollywood, you know, it's, you know, it's a bit, you know, it's a similar thing, you know, Know, what what you experience? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'm not there yet. I've got a long way to go. But, um, you know, yeah, I think it, it's just so different. You know, yeah. directing is you can sort of move, the steer the film a certain way, whereas acting, you've just got to make sure that your little your little bit is, mm-hmm. you know, you got to make it pop. So, mm-hmm. Have you, Mike, mm. done uh, both before, directed and... and yeah, I have. In? I've done a, um, a three-pilot series called The Underdog, and it was basically just a day in the life of an Aussie. So we actually were with a dancer, we were with a chef and a concreter and we did their whole day and we put it in 20 minutes and I was sort of, we were, we were presenting it, me and a mate of mine, Josh, and so we had to sort of direct the whole day and direct them and but really try and just make it look natural as well. So we're waiting to hear back from that. But yeah, it's a lot more work than just specific directing acting. So yeah, good luck, Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Keanu. Um, okay, the next news is Microsoft is now wanting to adapt Halo, the video game series, into a, uh, a television program and it's executive produced by Steven Spielberg. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think... You're a bit it, of a Halo fan? Or? Well, I did play it. And there was many late nights where I was up there yeah. with um, some foster kids that I used to look after. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Surely it'd be just cheaper to put a GoPro on the end of a camera, wouldn't it? And just <laughs> go through the forest or something. Yeah, and just chuck in, um, produced by Steven Spielberg, That's right. like with everything else he does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. I know yeah. we've touched on before that the transitions between video games and TV video games and, and movies are not so great. I mm. just don't think, you know, Halo's got its own, you choose mm. your end of the story, you know, yeah. you follow through. How is it TV? How's that going? I don't think mm. it's going to work. Yeah, and it's definitely challenging because I remember, like, I never really played the Halo games, but I, my friend did. Yeah. And I've seen there's such a strong cinematic element to the game. I mean, how are they going to top that with a TV mm. series? You know, it, it's, you know, they've just, the video games, they've just gone, like, the budgets, yeah. they're big, they're almost as big as movies these yeah, days. True. And now, you know, how are they going to, you know, compare? Mm. It'll be, it'd be tough, to, you know, to compare, but we'll see. Yeah. But yeah. guys, there is, Steven Spielberg is part of it, so, yeah. I mean, it's going to be, I reckon mm. it's going to be quite decent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah, the next one is Bad Teacher. Did you ever see that film? No. With Cameron Diaz, Justin Timberlake? No. Well, now, that, now they want to make that into a TV series for um, CBS. Okay. Yeah, um, what you, I know you definitely... <laughs> oh, I <laughs> think happy. Bad Teacher was terrible. Yeah. Cam, I like Cameron Diaz. Mm. I think she's, she's a great actress. But um, that, that actual movie was terrible. Yeah. I don't see how they're going to take an old film now, 2011... Mm bring it into a TV series. Mm-hmm. They've got someone else acting as the main character anyway. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to work. I thought it was a bit crude. I, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever see, um, say, movies transitioning into television programs that are successful? Like one I can think of is Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, yeah. That was one that was like a really crappy, forgettable movie. Mm. But then Joss Whedon did the TV series and man, that was mm. good. Yeah. It, it went off. Yeah. Buffy was very popular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Um, so, guys, also, we've got Only God Forgives, which has uh, got Ryan Gosling in it. Uh, it has, as we heard on the news, mm. audience members booing and hissing and walking out. Mm. Um, obviously, maybe a bit gruesome. Mm. Uh, I know I can say that I don't like gory movies. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a big fan, yeah. so maybe mm. I'll be one of those audience members that walks out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Like, you're obviously you know, director. What are your thoughts yeah. on those? Look, I films? think as a filmmaker, I, I think things are changing. I think we've got to pull back on giving the audience so much. And I think that's in every area, whether it's sexually explicit or graphic violence or whatever it is. I think the movies that are making the money anyway are ones like Gladiator and things where you're holding back on a lot of that. I mean, there was still a bit of violence, but I guess it's um, at certain times, you know, war movies and things like mm-hmm. that. But if it's unnecessary, yep. um, I think we're not leaving much up to the imagination. Do you think it must sort yeah. of serve the plot, as you're saying? Like, it's not just, you know, 
like special effects where you just go all crazy you know as long as it helps the plot you know with yeah. the violence it's okay yeah for sure mm. and then even still i mean it's yeah i think we're getting pretty desensitized <laughs> holding back's always that you know your big movies do it so if you want to make a film that's successful i guess yeah mm. yeah if people are using their own imaginations they're putting their own a bit into it and if mm. you're seeing the actual mm. gruesome bit then mm. it's sort of ruining maybe that's not exactly how you would have put it mm. maybe mm. maybe it was more graphic for you or, yeah. or less yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's why i stayed away from the saw movies at all costs because mm. they were just drivel yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well guys we're going to take a break now but stay tuned for more showreel <laughs> Welcome back to Showreel. Later in the segment, we have a special appearance by David and Margaret. But first, it's time for a hangover. This is the worst place on earth. I know, right? So many good memories. Oh, my life is great! Is that Chow? <laughs> oh my God, you guys! You ready to do this? Yeah. Wait, what are we doing? Ah! Oh, Holy crap! Ah! Oh God. So, is The Hangover Part 3 a great movie, you ask? It was fairly entertaining and probably worth seeing if you liked the first one. I'll give you a few of the pros of the film. Number one, Melissa McCarthy. Can you guys think of a better love interest for Alan? No, neither can I. Number two, Chow, and plenty of him. Clearly, director Todd Phillips realised that Chow was a massive draw card in the original Hangover. He's all over Part 3, in and amongst everything, from busting out of a Bangkok jail to belting out hurt by nine inch nails at a karaoke night. Number three, what happens to Stu after the credits? Now I won't give it away if you haven't seen it, but if you've wondered whether they could top Stu losing a front tooth or getting a face tattoo, rest assured they've found a way. And last but definitely not least, Bradley Cooper. Not much to say here. But if you're anything like me, I can deal with looking at the 2010 Sexiest Man Alive for a bit over an hour. Now, unlike the original, hang the original in Hangover 2, the original storyline hasn't been rehashed. The film was grasping at straws for a real plot, and there were times when I felt the jokes were a little bit hit and miss. Overall, I'd give The Hangover three, two and a half stars out of five. It might be one to wait until it comes out on DVD. So what do you guys think? Will you be going to see Hangover or have already seen it? <laughs> well, I know I've, I've already seen it already and I'll be a bit nicer to you and I'd give it about, you know, three stars. I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, it definitely tried to be different from the first two. You know, it wasn't where they get drunk again and then they have to find their way to the beginning. But they did just diversify the plot, like you were saying. And it was okay. Like, it wasn't the greatest film ever made, but it wasn't the worst. But it was... It was, well, um, it was a good um, Sunday well spent. That's all I could say about it. <laughs> um, I think it's funny that they keep saying it's the end of the Wolfpack trilogy, that that's mm. the end. But at the end of the movie, not, not giving away anything. Mm. But it sort of seemed like they wanted to go into maybe another one or leaving it open, open-ended for another hangover. Well, I think, I don't know, they, I think they've basically used up all the plots. I mean, if, if they were smart, they, they would have stopped at the first one, let alone going to a fourth one. But I actually want to ask you, this is what um, ties in with what you're doing as a filmmaker. Like with Hollywood, do you think they're just sort of, you know, the Hollywood's just run out of ideas. They just keep going sequels, sequels, sequels because of the money and stuff. Like the idea and the creativity is gone these days. Yeah, it's a good point, Tony. We're seeing mm. franchises, Fast and Furious, the hangover, yep. all these, they're becoming just a little mini business empire in themselves. Mm. So you're losing a bit of the integrity, but... You know, there's hope yet. Um, there's a lot of emerging filmmakers. You know, I've just come off set on the weekend. I played a boxer on a short film called Paladin. And, um, you know, they were the Simard brothers and the Grisic brothers, IK Productions. And they're, they're, I don't think they're even 20 yet, you know. And massive, amazing story, you know, amazing um, talent. So I think there's, there's hope yet. I don't think... I think Hollywood may have had its heyday. And so you'll have a lot of independent filmmakers across the globe rising up and, um, and just getting some good stories out there. So, yeah. Yeah, because I remember they. Um, I remember reading once they said the '70s was the golden era of uh, Hollywood. You had like Godfather, Apocalypse Now, but now these days it's all corporatized everything, and it's just basically for the merchandising. And it'd be definitely interesting to see those independent filmmakers, you know, take the mantle. Absolutely. And what do you think about the? Well, just adding on there, I reckon the trailer for The Hangover barely showed anything. 
it mm. showed uh, you know the stars faces and maybe like one or two little scenes in it mm. but I, I think to myself well because the other hangover you know was so big mm. uh they don't need to show much because they're going to get the people in who liked the original anyway mm -hmm. so it's pretty yeah they are the milking it milking off it mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I don't know well the hangover obviously it's going to make its money you know hollywood's just going to continue but let's just hope you know the independent producers mm. and come to their way okay now the next big release we wanted to talk about was the great gatsby I mean, are you gonna? Are you definitely gonna watch that one in the cinemas? Yeah, look, I'd love to go and see that. Um, you know, uh, anything 180 million dollars you'd, <laughs> you'd want to go and see. <laughs> Baz Luhrmann certainly got his his own creative <laughs> style, and yeah. not not sort of liked by everyone with <laughs> Australia. That sort of yeah. you know massive amount on marketing, yeah. um, and perhaps the story fell a bit. So. I just hope it's not like that again, but I'll go and see it. Yeah, I like. I want to wear the suit Leonardo DiCaprio wears because <laughs> mate, those costume designs, they're, they're oh. top notch. I know you, you're in love with that. I'm really excited <laughs> about it. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. You want those diamond necklaces? Yeah. Oh, their outfits, that, that <laughs> Real ones, era yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. roaring 20s. Yeah. But now that one, it, I think it, once again, that'll make its money. You know, Basil Luhrmann, he's obviously proven himself. And it's an American classic novel, so yeah. I think it, it'll make its money back. But um, The Great Gatsby is currently in theaters right now. Mac, once again, thank you so no much worries. for joining us. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Lauren. Yep. And I can tell we've all had a lot of fun today. And be sure to make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll leave you for now with a review from David and Margaret. See you next time. Das Bait, or The Bait, is a day in the life of a supermarket in Austria. A supermarket that first gets robbed at gunpoint, then hit by a tsunami, and then, would you believe it, invaded by a great white shark. Let's take a look. With its awful accents, wooden acting, shopping basket driving helmets, and small dogs on surfboards, Das Bait is a movie I knew I would regret seeing only 10 minutes into the film. The wobbly visuals and obvious storyboard gaps only add to the misery. I really dislike this film. What are your thoughts on it, Margaret? Well, you know, David, surprisingly, I agree with you. I, I actually hated, I honestly hated this movie from the very beginning. It's somehow reached into my soul and took away 93 minutes of my life that I will never get back. I, I truly felt manipulated by the, the cheesy music score and the, the unconvincing use of computer-generated images. Where was this filmed? At Majorca or something? The, uh, those regional accents, I swear it actually needed subtitles. It had six writers, you know. Well, that it does explain a lot. It had a budget of $36 million. What were the producers thinking? And the money shot? <sighs> Telegraph from way back. I hear the guys at RedTube do it better. Oh, I've seen it much better. Much better on YouTube. <laughs> what a silly little film. Well, what did you think of it? Hold on, David. I'm actually just hearing something from our producers. This is not actually an... Austrian film, it's an Australian film. Australian film? Five stars. It's a five stars from me as well. Well, Dustbait opens in limited release on Thursday. <laughs>